Hello and welcome to the first video in this lecture series where we'll be talking about GDNT. Um, in this video specifically, we'll be discussing GDNT symbols, terminology, and tolerance. But before we really get into that, I just want to give a quick overview of what is GDNT and why do we care about it. You might notice that when you model a part within your 3D modeling software, the part is theoretically perfect. It has the dimensions, the dimensions of the features are exactly as you dimension it to be. And, you know, the sides might be perfectly flat. There's no roughness unless you specifically define it to be so. But when you bring that part over for manufacturing, you might notice that there is going to be imperfections due to the machining process. And you might notice that the features are slightly different than what you dimension it to be. And this is why we need a GDNT. GDNT is a way to convey engineering tolerances because in physical reality, due to machining process, you will have imperfections and you will have dimensions that are slightly off because no machine is going to be perfect. So the question then becomes, well, to what extent, to what extent is a part considered to be an acceptable part? Because especially if we look at this on a microscopic lens, we notice that there is, for instance, a lot of imperfection along the edge here, where you see that it's not perfectly smooth. And that's where we get into the idea of utilizing something like tolerances. A tolerance accompanies a dimension typically, and it, it tells the person reading it to what extent can we allow deviation. And in this case, we're saying that as long as the width of the plate is between 4.99 and 5.01, then this part is an acceptable part. So, if we have all the even with all the surface roughness that we have here, if the part width is 5.01, then this part is within tolerance, and we can um, accept it um, for use. So GDNT often is used as a way to communicate engineering tolerances to manufacturing, so they know to what tolerance the part needs to be, or to what tolerance a dimension needs to be. And it's also a way to communicate with quality because we need them to, we need the quality engineers to be able to know when a part is considered to be an acceptable part and when a part is not acceptable. You might ask yourself, well, why do, why does it matter? Like, why would we ever have a less tolerant part? Like, why wouldn't we? just make the tolerance extremely accurate as, as much as can be for the machining tools that is being, being utilized. Well, this often, this is a really good question and it actually relates directly to money and it relates to time because the more tolerance, the, the more accurate the tolerance needs to be for a feature, the more accurate tooling is required and oftentimes the longer the machining process actually takes. So you can have an extremely accurate part if you're willing to pay a lot of money for it and if you're willing to wait a longer period of time, both of which we know is extremely dis, uh, disadvantageous for engineers. So at the end of the day, GDNT is a balance between increasing the accuracy or increasing the time and you typically can only get one or the other here. And for a mechanical designer, it's understanding this trade-off that really drives the need to incorporate GDNT within the mechanical drafting. So now let's look at an actual engineering drawing, which has a lot of dimensions and other features. And let's talk a bit more about dimension specifically. So nominal dimension is your kind of your standard dimension. Nominal dimensions are pretty bare bone and it's pretty easy to define. And if you ever want, you know, typically the tolerance of a nominal dimension will be specified within a GTOL node. So in this case, if you look at a GTOL node, you look at the number of decimal places in your nominal tolerance, and that tells you what the tolerance is. 
So because we have two decimal places, we know that these nominal dimensions are plus minus 0.05 for the tolerance. So you can see that nominal dimensions are really easy to use because it's really easy to define the tolerance range. And you can easily have you know 25 of these dimensions with multiple different uh, places of decimals. And all you need is one g tall node table to convey to convey what the tolerance is for all of the dimensions that you have that are nominal. So that's that's what nominal dimensions are. But the next one that we have here are basic dimensions. And for basic dimensions, basic dimensions are theoretically perfect dimensions. And what do we what do we mean by that? Well, a basic dimension is typically boxed, which is how you know that it's a basic dimension. That's how we physically represent a basic dimension, at least. But the actual location is not precise. So looking at this whole feature, we have a dimension one inch by one inch with basic dimensions, but the actual location of this hole is going to be determined by the feature control frame down here. So that means that even though we are saying that this is one inch by one inch, the actual location of the hole might be slightly different. And because these are theoretically perfect, well, not directly perfect, but because they are theoretical dimensions, we differentiate this from nominal dimensions, which are actual dimensions. So nominal is the actual dimension, and your basic dimension is going to be your, your theoretical dimension. Um, and we use basic dimensions whenever a dimension is going to be a theoretical dimension and the actual dimension, the actual location, the actual size is actually held to something else, such as your feature control frame that you have down here. So finally, we have our reference dimension. A reference dimension is kind of as implied by the name. It's used only for reference and there's no inspection that is actually required for a reference dimension, typically speaking. So reference dimension is really just to give information about dimension. A part will never be rejected because it doesn't meet a reference dimension unless it's like way, way off. Um, but if this part was 0 0.10, it's probably not going to be rejected. If this part was like 0.5 thickness, then that's obviously going to draw a huge red flag. And then an engineer might be called to discuss this. But normally reference dimensions are used when we want to convey something that's non-critical, which is why we use it as a reference dimension. So the way that we actually use dimensions on the drawing does play a pretty big factor into the GDNT, into understanding the tolerances. So for example, we have nominal dimensions in both cases here, but what's important is that because we are stacking these dimensions here, we are actually stacking the tolerance. which means that if you wanted to get the dimension from the top to bottom here, well, the actual dimension is going to be 2.75 plus minus 0.15. And this is what we call chain dimensioning because these dimensions are stacked on top of one another, kind of like a chain. And in this case, the tolerance is also stacked so that your final tolerance is actually plus minus 0.15. This is critical because if you now look at baseline dimensioning, well, baseline dimensioning dimensions everything relative to a baseline, which in this case, this is the baseline here. You can see all of the dimensions are being dimensioned relative to that baseline. So, but the important thing is because of baseline dimensioning, this dimension only has one tolerance stack up because it's only just that one dimension, right? Whereas here, because we have three tolerance stack ups, we have plus minus 0.15. Here we have plus minus 0.05. So to an inexperienced drafter, you know, they might not, they may not catch that there is a difference between these two ways of putting your dimensions on a drawing, but you can easily see how if you have a, if you have a feature here, a, let's say this is a slot, right? 
and the slot only allows for a plate that has a height of 2.8 well well in this case this part is potentially not going to work because it would allow for a height of 2.9 but this part will always work because it only allows for a maximum of a 2.8 height so this is a pretty good example of why it matters to not only understand GDNT, but a way that putting the dimensions on the drawing do affect the GDNT placements, and it, it does affect whether a part is actually going to work at the end of the day or not work. So how do we compromise between these two? You can see that chain dimensioning is probably going to cost less time and less money because it is it, it is um, it's looser on the tolerance, but a baseline dimensioning is is going to be firmer on the tolerance. You're going to have a more accurate tolerance because everything is held to the two decimal place tolerance here. So the compromise is often doing something called direct dimensioning. In direct dimensioning, you're essentially dimensioning the critical dimensions with baseline dimensioning, right? But then for the non-critical dimensions, well, you can do something like chain dimensioning here. So you can see that because these are less critical, right? Because maybe say we don't care about this height. Let's say that we don't care about that height as much as we care about this height. Then I'm okay with potentially having plus minus 0 0.10 tolerance here. But I, I, I want to keep this tolerance at plus minus 0.05. And this is the ideal way to do it because it conveys the tolerance exactly as needed and it allows you to optimize both the accuracy via the baseline dimensioning here, you're optimizing accuracy, and here you're optimizing time and money because you are conveying that you are okay with having a looser tolerance for, for this dimension and it's that, that's good. So this is kind of the compromise between the two. And this is the ideal way to do it. If you are experienced with drafting, you know exactly what you need for the part. The final, the final thing I want to talk about here for dimensioning is ordinate dimensioning. And in ordinate dimensioning, you are essentially dimensioning everything to an ordinate. So the ordinate in this case is a, a, uh, a zero line and every dimension is relative to that zero line along the direction of uh, of the dimensioning process. So in this case, everything along this direction is going to be relative to that zero line, which means, you know, this is one inch, this is 1.75 inch, this is 2.75 inch. Um, so personally speaking, I prefer ornate dimensioning because I think it's a lot cleaner for one. It doesn't have all of your leaders, which really clutter up your drawing after a while. You can imagine having, you know, 25 leaders in one direction, and it just makes it look a lot more cluttered. You also have the flexibility of putting in um, multiple decimal places. So, you know, this one can be, uh, this one can be three decimal places, and this one can be one decimal place. So you're not really held, held by the decimal places. Um, and order dimensioning also gives you some perspective on how to orient a part because by de defining this to be the zero line, you're acknowledging that this is, you're kind of acknowledging that this is a, a good surface to dimension everything from. And it gives you just some perspective on how you want to orient your part for inspection, for manufacturing. So you can see that, especially for sheet metal pieces, for instance, ornate dimensioning is kind of the common way to dimension something like sheet metal because it, the orientation of sheet metal matters quite a lot. And with the, with the machining process, it, it just kind of makes sense to use ornate dimensioning. So now that we've talked about dimensioning, we've talked about GDNT, I just want to kind of wrap up this video by giving a quick overview of some of the drafting symbols that you might see. Um, the first symbol is all round. Um, all round is really complementary to all over. The difference is that this is a 2D symbol and this is a 3D symbol. So for instance, here we're saying that the surface, 
the profile of a line has to be 0 0.002 all around, which means that if you have a box here, right, and we use all around, if I if I point all around here, then I'm saying that this the perimeter of this line has to be within 0 0.002. So it's a it's a 2D line, but it applies to the entire perimeter. Whereas if I'm using the all over here, well, the, for instance, the all over um, surface profile of a surface, well, now that's telling me that this entire 3D object has to be within 0 0.002. That's what the all over means. So that's a major difference here. One is a 2D, uh, 2D, 2D representation holding something to a 2D perimeter, and this is holding something to a 3D set of surfaces. So the next few symbols are pretty common. I just want to make sure that you're familiar with this. If you see this utilized in drafting notes, you know, this means a countersink feature, this means a counterbore feature, this means you're defining a diameter of something, this means you're defining a radius or something. So pretty self-explanatory. Finally, we have depth. If you want to, for instance, tell the machinist to only drill down, you know, 0 0.09 inches and not not break through the sheet metal, then then you can use a depth feature and define it with uh, 0 0.09. So that's that's what this means. So this concludes the first video in the series, um, and uh, there will definitely be more videos in this lecture series, so please stay tuned. Um, if you like this video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks.